Today I'm going to take a look at the by far best and most powerful mini PC in my collection. A device that could undoubtedly replace a desktop PC under certain circumstances. To be exact, we'll be looking at the GMK Tech Knuckbox M7 today. It's equipped with the powerful AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H 8-core CPU, which boasts the noticeably more powerful AMD Radeon 680M graphics. With 16GB of RAM and a 512GB NVMe SSD, the accompanying specs are pretty basic. However, you could opt for a better configuration when purchasing. We'll of course cover all the ports and connectivity on here, and we'll not only focus on raw performance in applications. I can tell you in advance that some games can be run with higher graphics settings on this device. That's reason enough for me to be able to claim that today's mini PC is one of the best I've ever tested so far. And the price isn't actually too bad either, considering what's being offered here. On Amazon, the configuration I have here goes for like 460 US dollars, but you could apply a 5% coupon, bringing the price down to effectively 437 dollars. Although on the manufacturer's official website, this very same device can be purchased for roughly $350, a much better deal. Finally, we'll also run tests on power consumption, temperatures, and noise levels. In fact, there's a setting waiting to be touched in the UEFI BIOS that allows us to squeeze out even a little more performance out of the Knuckbox M7. At the end of the day, could the GMK Tech Knuckbox M7 be a good fit to replace or complement your power-hungry desktop PC? The package includes the following. The M7 mini PC, the power cord and power supply with a rated power output of 120 watts, an HDMI cable, a VESA mounting bracket, and paper documentation. First of all, I'd like to praise the above average build quality. The case of the Knuckbox M7 is, for once, actually made of metal, although plastic is used for the transparent top cover. Aesthetically, I like the design here, but that's a matter of taste of course. What I don't like, however, is that the top cover is a terrible dust and fingerprint magnet and is just as prone to nasty scratches. Apart from that, it's a very nice device. In the center, you can also see the system fan, which draws in fresh air through the gap on the sides of the device. The mini PC therefore sports a total of two fans, one of which is of course integrated into the CPU cooler. The manufacturer advertises quite good and quiet cooling. For this, they had to obviously make the mini PC a bit bigger in terms of dimensions. We're looking at 127 by 132 by 58 millimeters. That still qualifies as compact in my book. At the heart sits the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H CPU based on Zen 3 Plus with 8 cores and 16 threads. It's paired with the aforementioned Radeon 680M graphics unit featuring 12 compute units. My Knuckbox M7 comes equipped with 16GB of memory. This is DDR5 RAM with a speed of 4800 megatransfers per second running in dual channel. Although, curiously, hardware info reads out quad channel. If anyone of you watching knows more on that subject, feel free to enlighten me. Now for the SSD, GMK Tech decided to go with the Lexar NM6A1 based on PCIe 3.0 X4 with a capacity of 512GB. The NVMe SSD is expectedly fairly speedy, delivering really good read and write performance. The M7 mini PC is actually also very easy and straightforward to open. The trick is rotating the top plastic cover to get it off. Then you loosen four large screws and instantly gain access for potential upgrades. Among other things, the system fan is very easy to clean and replace here, but we are also given great access to the RAM, the SSD, the Wi-Fi card underneath it, and even the CMOS battery. Furthermore, the device can accommodate another NVMe-based M.2 SSD. Absolutely exemplary. Now let's talk general connectivity. On the front, next to the power button, we get 3.5mm audio, 2 USB-A 10 gigabit, 1 USB-C 40 gigabit but with support for DisplayPort output and power delivery. 
Additionally, there is a highly sought after Oculink port with PCIe 4.0 X4 support for external GPU solutions if you were to transform this mini PC into a true gaming machine. Moving on to the back, two USB 2.0, one DisplayPort 2.0, one HDMI 2.1, two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports based on Intel controllers, another USB-C 40 gigabit port with display port and power delivery capability, and last but not least, a Kensington lock. Unfortunately, there's no SD card reader on here. That sure would have been a nice addition, but one can't really complain about the I.O. here, on the contrary. In fact, a total of four monitors could be hooked up to this mini PC at the same time one via DisplayPort, another via HDMI, and two via USB-C. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 are on board, which don't stand out from the crowd that much. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed, by the way. It's the usual version 23H2 out of the box. It was activated using a digital license, and after reading out the license key, it turns out to be the type OEM, which is great. There doesn't appear to be any bloatware or third-party software on this system. I also didn't spot any questionable background services or processes running. There are no unusual extensions pre-installed in the Microsoft Edge web browser either, only Google Docs offline, which Microsoft itself appears to be pushing. Needless to say, I did run virus scans to make sure there's no malware on the mini PC out of the box. My tests with three different scanners came back with one and the same result. No threats were detected. Neither Windows Defender, slash security, malware bytes, nor the external SSD scan via Norton 360 reported anything bad here. Perfect. The UEFI BIOS is excellent. Unlike many other mini PCs, we users are not locked out here. We can really go wild in here and make all sorts of adjustments. For instance, we could also change the fan curve and system fan settings. A more notable feature, though, would have to be the option to switch between power modes. Out of the box, we are in the so-called balance mode. However, there are also quiet and performance modes available, which I will do my testing with in addition to balance. Essentially, this increases the CPU's package power limit from 54 watts to a respectable 70 watts. This should result in higher performance for us. We'll soon see how much of a difference that really makes. Now once we put all 8 cores to work, the clock speeds in balance mode is at around 3.9 to 4.2 GHz within the first few seconds. After 2 minutes, the clock speed drops to around 3.7 to 4 GHz. If we now go ahead and switch to the performance mode in the BIOS, the clock speed initially is at 4.1 to 4.4 GHz. Two minutes later, we are reading out 4.0 to 4.2 GHz. The performance mode certainly does appear to have an impact on the CPU clock speed. So let's go ahead and run our first performance test with Cinebench 2024. Today's Knuckbox M7 catapults itself to the top of the chart and is one of the most powerful mini PCs I own. However, I'd like to note that performance mode only delivers us a 3% performance increase over balance mode. But if we compare the power consumption between the two modes, I'd actually recommend leaving the mini PC in its stock balance mode, purely for efficiency reasons. 3% more performance at a 20% higher power draw is completely out of proportion for me. Nonetheless, the AMD 6850H CPU is still quite power efficient, consuming very little power, especially during light loads such as watching videos and movies. The temperatures and noise levels are also perfectly acceptable. In balance mode, we are hovering noticeably below the 80 degrees Celsius mark and only slightly above the 40 decibel mark at max. The fans are audible, you can hear them spinning constantly, but even at full load, I never found the fan noise to be annoying. Once you switch into the performance mode, not only does the power draw increase, but so do the temperatures and noise levels as well. But even here, I'm quite happy with the results. If we now compare against an already more power efficient desktop PC, it becomes obvious that a mini PC like the one I'm looking at today, regardless of whether it's in balance or performance mode, is significantly more power efficient 
than the desktop counterpart. That's why I often talk about replacing or complementing a desktop PC with such a mini PC. I myself am considering it. The Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H CPU is powerful enough to offer a super smooth and stutter-free experience for everyday tasks. In fact, it also allows for light to even moderate image and video editing as long as you don't overdo it. But how suitable is this device for gaming? Well, I can say that the Radeon 680M with its 12 compute units finally has enough horsepower to easily fire up AAA game titles from past years without any lag or stuttering. And in performance mode, you can even squeeze out a few more frames here and there. Some titles can even be played smoothly at high graphics settings, which can certainly be considered a small achievement for integrated graphics solutions in mini PCs. While not every single game title out there will be fully playable, with a few adjustments, the chances are at least there you will be able to run the game somehow. While the Nuckbox M7 still cannot be hailed as a gaming machine, it does deliver very, very acceptable performance for its price range. Conclusion There's not much more to say about the Nuckbox M7 by GMK Tech. Its build quality is fairly decent, it's easy to upgrade, and we get pretty decent cooling, which thankfully is not deafening or annoying. We also do have the option to switch to performance mode in the BIOS to unlock a bit more power, and the overall connectivity offered the ports is top-notch, including Oculink. I'm less enthusiastic about my particular RAM and SSD configuration though. 16GB of RAM and the 512GB SSD might be a bit low, but for a premium you could at least choose to go with 32GB and 1TB respectively, or you could simply perform the necessary upgrades yourselves. When it comes to the SSD, it's quite easy as we have an additional slot available. The price performance ratio is above average in my opinion. Therefore, the GMK Tech Nuckbox M7 deserves a clear recommendation from me, and for some people out there, it can actually serve as a replacement to a desktop PC, or at the very least, as a nice addition. What are your thoughts on the mini PC I reviewed today? Are you impressed by the CPU and graphics performance? If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate a like, but alternatively, you could just as well hit that dislike button. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.